Hello, everybody. Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Sunday. Good to see you out there. Some rumors that Nate and Deandra may be co-mingling. We're going get, to get into this. Let's not jump on the hype train. Of course, Nate and Michelle just broke up. Um, this is a, one of those videos that's uh, collecting some information from the Bachelor subreddits. And by collecting information, like who followed who first, uh, spotted together only a couple weeks after he breaks up with Michelle. You know, this is sort of one of those things that becomes a big deal in the Bachelor community when leads break up because people want to put the pieces together. Who did it? Who done it? Tomorrow, I'm actually going to have two different videos. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, one video where Katie Thurston addresses further detail about her relationship in breakup with John Hersey. We'll get into that tomorrow when I'm back home at the studio. I'm getting ready to leave the Bahamas right now. Uh, rather than packing up all my smelly linen shirts, boy, do I need a good wash. Let me, t I need, look, they don't have any conditioner down here. What am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? This hair's all over the place. Can the brother get some Moroccan oil? Anyway, so let's get into it. Here are three photos. Uh, one uh, with their knees touching. Oh boy, don't tell. Oh no, two single people's knees are touching. Luckily, she's wearing pants because God forbid they both had shorts on in there. You know, little kneecaps were rubbing up against each other. And then we've got a nice photo here of Deandra uh, with Marissa and she's got maybe like a crochet bralette type of thing on. Just fantastic. Um, boardwalk clothing and then of course Nate's with Rodney so that's where they're at how did this all happen well Michelle you know uh, has been sharing clues in the last month or two um, uh, about the demise of this relationship uh, she said she was stepping down from teaching and she was stuck in survivor mode this of course coming on the heels of the tragedy that happened in Texas in Uvalde and of course I'm sure it was in the making already uh, because it just highlighted how tough of a job teachers have. They're underappreciated, they're underpaid, they're under supported with resources, their classrooms are overcrowded, all those things. Um, how, how could we possibly, how could anyone possibly want to get into that field when the reward is really, well, the students make you feel good. Yeah, well, make her bank account feel good and uh, maybe she'll be a better version of what she could be. Anyway, so they address the pressure. There he is with the, the most hilarious game headset ever. He's like, are you on a podcast or playing Call of Duty? Speaking of uh, calling her duty, um, they they had to deal with that. That didn't make sense at all. I'm in a hotel room, guys. I'm trying my best. They had to deal with breakup rumors. Um, Hi there. I got some sad news about Michelle and Nate from The Bachelorette. I guess she was crying in their staff room last week. So what? first of all, uh, Michelle's got horrible friends if one of her friends leaked this but then again you know she's probably at work where people are underpaid undervalued and they they uh, see her as some celebrity and they felt the need to uh, rip her down it's not good but it's how humanity works sadly all right so then they finally announced that it's over after of course she had the photo where her ring was off and people and she had, she was kind of like no just because I didn't have my ring on doesn't mean we're not together no but people are wondering now um, was she blindsided and of course she had to address the $200,000 they were given, which then I have addressed and said they were given a bonus to start their life together because they broke up does not mean they should return the bonus. They should find a way to split that money. The fact that he dumped her, look, she got, here's my thought on the bonus. She got paid a couple hundred thousand dollars, I'm assuming, to become the Bachelorette. Not only that, she got to shoot the Bachelorette during the summer, so they worked around her schedule. She didn't miss any work. He worked for free on the Bachelorette as an alumni, as a contestant. So my thought is he should definitely get paid half of it, even if he broke up with her. The relationship didn't work out. It takes two to tango. I think they should split it 50-50. Now, he might feel really guilty and be like, look, I don't care about the money, whatever, you take it. That's fine too. But obviously she's going to be the hero when a hero comes along from this story, um, uh, she's going to be the sort of the, the winner in the long run as far as bigger social media, the audience is going to feel for her and all that jazz. Um, but what's interesting is she never really wanted this life. Like Michelle never really wanted the spotlight. She never had social media. So I'm not just putting words in her mouth. She never even had Instagram. She had to create it to go on Matt James season. She went from zero to wherever she's at right now. So... My hope is that she can find a way to use her platform to not only uh, monetize her, you know, living, but also to, um, you know, to be able to um, help others in a way that she was doing in a classroom, but on a much bigger scale. So anyway, you know what? Speaking, speaking of, we're, all right, we're going to get into that story real quick, okay? But let's just go to Becca Martinez because she brought up a great point here. It's, it's a real hard time to be 
uh, to, be, to be trying to make money in the world. The recession is looming. Uh, people literally haven't had, you know, the, the pay raises are, are just abysmal. The price of um, housing has gone up three times but since the last time anyone got a minimum wage increase. And, and my point with all that is that Becca had posted that she had to go to the vet. And I can relate to this story. My fiance and I last summer had to take our dog to the vet and it cost a lot of money. And our thought was, what if we were in a position where we couldn't afford this vet bill? We would have literally probably had to put our pet down. Um, so she had something with her cat yesterday, Becca. Now, I'm going to tie it back to Michelle, so just hang on for a second here. This wasn't part of the plan, but this is how we're going. So she says, thank goodness I'm an influencer because the bill was so high, right? And of course, people probably wrote her back, you know, saying mean things. And she said, wasn't trying to say that as a flex. It's an absolutely insane privilege to make a lot of money from posting on Instagram. More like I'm feeling aware and sad about how five years ago there was no way I'd be able to afford these costs and wouldn't and would have had to say goodbye to my kitty today if I was in a different position. So I could totally relate to that as we've had a, a pretty good year here in the old Dave Neal Enterprises, but relate to the fact that it, it can be a crushing expense to just care for your pet or your loved one or yourself. Um, our country, we're actually having, cue the national anthem here, we, we've got like three or four years in a row where the uh, the average age of death has, act, like life expectancy has gone backwards, put it that way, in the last couple of years. And part of that is because people can't afford random checkups to see preventative illness and all these other things. It's sad that someone like Becca as an influencer is, is someone who, who can actually afford to um, take care of things that some others can't. It's sad we live in a world where we don't have universal health care in what's supposed to be one of the richest countries in the world. It's just so sad. We need to do something about it. Um, but someone like Michelle has the chance to use her platform and following for good and make good money in the process. So that's where she is. Nate will do the same. So Here's two posts from the subreddit, The Bachelor. Deandra celebrating Nate's birthday. Rodney and Leroy also in attendance. Not a big deal there. There they are. But then another photo comes out. Nate and Deandra hanging out together. Now this photo was two separates. It was them on the boardwalk, which, by the way, no one should ever go on. It's kind of gross. Uh, um, and then there's Nate and Rodney. And um, she said Leroy. Do we see... Who's... Oh, I didn't see Leroy. Maybe he's in a different photo. Um, anyway... So here are some of the comments after we saw those photos come out. Of course, this several weeks after Nate and Michelle broke up. And because Nate was getting a lot of hate for this. Unpopular opinion, but I don't think that what Nate did is as bad as some of these comments are making it seem. He went on a show for the experience like Michelle did and clearly didn't have a connection and just happened to be picked. Michelle chose him after being told that he wasn't ready by his own father. She chose to ignore all the signs. I think it's good they broke up and he didn't continue milking their relationship for more money and followers. Now, the retort to that would be, well, he didn't have to propose. Looking at you, Dale Moss. But again, sometimes, you know, you're part of a, a, a runaway train. He is single. A very short-term relationship ended, like millions do, every day. These bachelor groups meet up all the time. It's a birthday party, and Batch Nation singles are there. One can't assume he's with anyone just because of a photo. He's single and allowed to flirt and date and meet women and do whatever he wants, as is she. People break up and move on. As for disrespecting Michelle, no, he's not. He's out and about, living his life, as she is. She will be fine. She may have been surprised at the breakup, but really, watch their Valentine's Day game show. Tell me they look like they are in a good spot. They were not. She was rather harsh, and he looked annoyed. Neither came out looking happy and content. However, they tried. It seems like they hosted, they honestly put the effort in to build their relationship. It just wasn't working. There is zero need to drag either of them. And then here's where people started putting weird clues together. Now, Tammy went on this, I don't want to say tirade, but she went on a rant saying that she was quitting The Bachelor and she was done dirty by the show, but she never said why. And, I, and, and she told me the same thing, that she was done dirty by the show, but never told me why. So here's some clues. It means Tammy unfollowed Michelle did a post delete while with Nate months ago. Michelle got the happy hour slot, the podcast, and Tammy threw a hissy fit. Deandra said she's attracted to Nate. Deandra and Nate started following one another slightly before Michelle's birthday, and they've been liking each other's pictures in under two minutes, months in the making. So what does this actually mean? I have no idea. 
somebody further put it down the timeline here to those wondering about the timeline. Of course, the timeline of who broke up with when, the unfollow, the follow. Deandra says she's interested in Nate as Michelle's season is airing. Now, Deandra probably didn't know that Nate was going to be the winner. May 26, Nate was on Bachelor Happy Hour and says his rose is seeking Michelle next week. Around May 29th, uh, they follow each other. Nate also follows some other Bachelor Nation girls. May 29th, he likes her recent post. Okay, so May 29th, Nate follows Deandra. And then he also likes her recent post. June 2nd, he meets Michelle for her birthday weekend. June 2nd, podcast recording day, Michelle mentions she's happy to see Nate for the first time in four weeks. And they had to reintroduce each other. June 3rd is Michelle's birthday. June 4th, Wango Tango and Nate's birthday post. Presumed they broke up sometime in the next week as Michelle was under the weather for Bachelor Happy Hour. June 17th, breakup post. June 22nd, Nate posts thirst trap that Deandra likes and he follows her on TikTok. Now Deandra invited to his birthday celebrations. Um, all right, folks, that's what we've got. That's where the story's at. It might develop farther. Uh, my suggestion to all involved is to just like, you know, I, again, this is going to sound so hypocritical because I was going to say let them live, but here I am making a video about it. But I think the deal is it's like, look, yeah, they, they were engaged, but we, have to, we can't see these engagements the way we see normal real-life engagements. They knew each other for three, four weeks before they got engaged. They tried to make it work long distance. It didn't work. He's a young guy who's going to go date other people. And furthermore, it's, while it might look bad that he's caught in a photo with somebody who was also on the show, they live in a world where if he uh, hangs out with a, someone that he meets at a bar that wasn't on the show, she might dish details and share screen grabs and all these things. So it probably feels protective of them to be insulated and only hanging out with people from the show. It's also, I think, very um, uh, 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 elementary to think of Deandra as a woman who can't hang out with another man consensually. That's all on them. Let me know what you guys think, though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. One more video coming your way on this golden Sunday, and then tomorrow we're going to have so much content, I will be jamming down your throats. We're going to have content all day long leading up to the premiere of The Bachelorette, July 11th, 2022. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.